Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Wednesday, uh, March 22nd, 2023, and today I am covering Paranormal News. As always, you can find all the episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me, at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O, paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions, or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Um, also, I uh, just something new to add to the introduction here. Um... If you would like to support the show in any way, uh, of course, you can always share it with anyone that you think may enjoy it. Um, but also, if you uh, are into um, basically any kind of reading at all, or if you think anyone else might be, uh, I have books. So you can, uh, I've already put the links in the chat here uh, where you can find the books that I've written, um, mostly paranormal um Paranormal themed, of course, uh, some fiction, some nonfiction. So you can either check out my books and or donate um, via PayPal or Venmo with more links coming soon um, to support the show if you would like and if you're able. Um, just uh, just because I was doing some math uh, just a few minutes ago and I figured out I put in about 30 to 40 hours a week on the show right around there. So... Um, a lot of time and resources and things like that so uh, i appreciate everyone being here and listening of course thank you all for listening whether you're here for the live show or you listen to the podcast or youtube feeds and um so yeah i think that covers just about everything for now and i'll be again i have links to everything in the chat here and i'll include them in the episode description and uh go from there so i have uh several stories here we'll see how many we can get through today and uh, a few that I left over from the last news show and uh, then the rest that I found tonight so um, this first one here is from dailypost.co.uk and the title reads haunted and iconic Anglesey Anglesey lighthouse uh, known as a supernatural hotspot. And um, it does seem like a lot of lighthouses, if you look into them, there's stories of paranormal activity in and around them. Um, I wonder if it's partly because of being so close to water, um, partly the isolation of it, with the people that have to stay there, a lot of times they're stuck there by themselves or maybe with their family or one or two other people. Uh, but it mentions that this um, it's a popular tourist destination, and it's said to be haunted by the spirit of a former lighthouse keeper, uh, Jack Jones. Um, and again, the a lot of the a lot of the lighthouses have similar legends and stories. So, uh, so this is um, said to be among Wales' most haunted spots. And uh, let me see here. It's um, it's known as South Stack Lighthouse, actually. Um, and there have been many reports there about paranormal activity, uh, events going on there. This is located on Holy Island. That's an interesting name. Uh, has had um, thousands of visitors uh, to check out the location. Also there because of the the stories of the paranormal associated with it. It says that for centuries, dragons, fairies, and other mythical creatures have been linked to North Wales. But um, this area, I'm not even going to try to say, say the name of the, the, the actual the Welsh name, um, is said to be the home to more spiritual beings. So, and uh, so it's kind of funny that this story ended up being in tonight's show because 
of uh, something that will be talked about in tomorrow night's show. Oh, and that's another thing I wanted. I forgot. I was going to remind everybody. Tomorrow night, there will not be a live uh, a live streaming show, but there will be an episode that will come out um, basically on Thursday morning. So just so everyone knows, no live stream, but there will be an episode. So that comes out that, that uh, next morning there. Anyway, sorry about that. Getting back to the article. Apparently this lighthouse is 135 feet tall. It was built in 1809 in order to warn ships about the um, the rocks below, obviously. Uh, it says that in 1853, there was a huge storm that crashed into the coast and um, wrecked a lot of ships in the area. So, and it says, according to legend, uh, the, the, house, the lighthouse keeper, Jack Jones, uh, died after being struck by a falling rock during the storm. So, but he can be heard apparently pounding on the lighthouse's doors and windows at night to this day. I wonder if it's just to be let in or... Huh. Um, also, with that kind of a thing, I wonder about that. Because it seems like objects could also hit the doors. If there's another storm that's bad enough. But not to say that it's not possible that there couldn't be things going on there. It says that the site's history has uh, attracted many professional ghost hunters over the years. Um, let's see here. So, and uh, it mentions that uh, it's also appeared on TV shows, obviously. Um, when you have, when it mentions professional ghost hunters, that's usually means there's going to be TV shows involved there in some cases. Um, not every case, obviously, but some. Um, it says that each year, uh, many people go to the lighthouse. Um, to, to visit it for the history, but also because of the paranormal. And uh, it's located in the, uh, apparently in a nature preserve, and has been uh, described as both iconic and haunted. So, um, it goes into more detail about the actual building. It says the lighthouse, uh, let's see here, uh, sits at the bottom of a, around a 400 um, stone steps, that's quite a track right there. Um, and it has a, a bridge nearby, built in 1983. It's currently going under renovations, which is um, makes me wonder if there's anything else, any kind of an increase in activity going on there. And it has links to, uh, to how to visit, <laughs> excuse me, the lighthouse, as well, if you happen to be in the area, so... I always um, love to share the stories about the lighthouses because I think that should be actually be on that list of types of places that seem to have a lot of activity. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah. Let's see here. Matt's all says lighthouses are beacons for the dead that died in shipwrecks. That that makes sense in a way. I could see that. Huh. Hadn't thought of it like that, but that's that um, that, that would, wouldn't surprise me. So, moving on to the next article here. Um, let me see here. This is from HalesOwenNews.co.uk. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. This one says, Haunted Museum, Stoke-on-Trent by Isabel Mitchell, Phoenix Collegiate. Uh, it says there. So, um, this is apparently, uh, let's see here, it just has the title over and over again, a couple times there. So apparently this is a, um, more of a gallery, I guess. Oh, there we go. Here's the actual article here. So it says that, um, this, uh, let's see, this reporter, um, was invited to be, uh, to go with a, a, a paranormal investigation group um, because of a previous experience they had and it was at this event um, let's see here um, so look at this so it's apparently this is the sixth most, most haunted location in the UK um, and this museum apparently and um, 
Let's see here. Goes into details about basically it's a museum of um, objects, uh, basically artifacts from um, a personal collection of. Uh, let me see here. I'm I lost the name, um, but uh, so some a private collection here, uh, Mr. Longson and uh, Miss. I'm not sure if you say this as boot or not, B-O-O-T-E, uh, decided to dedicate all of their time to create an, a museum, basically, uh, for the public. And this museum gives people the chance to learn about the, um, basically the past, the histories behind a lot of these items in this museum, which are associated with um, sort of the more macabre more um horrific elements of the past but um so let's see here people get to look at many of the, these objects that are said to have energy around them apparently and there are guided tours um so let's see here looking at the rest of this article here it says that there's cameras that are um installed in a lot of the rooms to capture any kind of uh, paranormal activity and uh, so let's see here yeah that just seems like it's describing this collection of items it says that most of them uh, let me see here so yeah that doesn't uh, I'm not um, picking up a lot from this article as I'm trying to skim it so definitely check it out sorry about that um, but uh, these museums are always interesting to me because of all the items that they collect over time. And then I'm sure they put things in, take things out. It makes me wonder what kind of energy, what kind of effects it has on, on the overall energy of a place like that. Um, even just in regular museums, I wonder how many uh, items in regular museums have energy attached to them. I've heard of, of course, different um, museums associated with the Titanic having paranormal activity surrounding them so anyway uh moving on <laughs> since i sort of uh botched that article um this next one is from and i'm guessing this is a radio station or media station k-a-k-e dot com uh and this one is a um uh, just basically discussion of sort of an aspect of paranormal investigations which which um i'm interested in it says, can ghosts really communicate through radio transmissions? And so this is um, largely about the um, the ghost box, the 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 item that um, tool that people use that they say will allow for communication with spirits, um, either through the, through the spaces in between the radio stations. Where they can supposedly say things that people will be able to hear, or even through the the um, timing, I'm I guess as from what I've heard of um, the phrases, the single words or phrases that can be heard um, by going across the whole radio spectrum. And um, so this is. Let me see here. Now they have a name for it. In this article that I'd never heard of, uh, and it's they're calling it um, radio voice phenomenon (RVP). So instead of EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, it's RVP. And um, this is a term I have never heard used before. I'm wondering if we're seeing sort of the beginning of a what will later on be a common term in the paranormal. That'd be um, pretty amazing to be present while that's happening in a way but it says here the advocates of this um rvp this new um te technique uh claim that they can use um radios in different ways to communicate with ghosts and or spirits um says that uh in order to hear that these things you have to you need to have access to a spirit box, of course, um, because that's what that's the radio part of it. And then, of course, it mentions being in a potentially haunted space. 
Um, so they go into the whole description of how these work. Again, it's really just um, cycling through the the radio band in different ways, and at different speeds sometimes, from what I've heard. And um, so, and then you can get some interesting recordings or, or words or phrases. Again, it's hard to say with all those what what's really happening to me anyway. But um, I think when combined with other tools, and then also with just how the the sense that you're getting from where you're at, I think is also important as always. Um, it's, it's possible, so I'm not really ruling it out completely. But I think there's a lot of room for maybe some misidentification of um, of activity there. Um, yes, yeah, um, and that was the thing I was confused about too at, at first. Um, PDG in chat there says, is that the same as a ghost box? I do believe they work. Yeah, and I, I do as well. I um, I just know, I think that they can work, but they can also, um, they can not work in some cases. Uh, I don't doubt that they can work, though. Um, but PDG says, I have a friend that makes them. Picked up swearing and a bunch of different languages. Interesting. Yeah, huh, that's neat. Um, yeah, no, I don't doubt that they can work. I've heard a lot of stories of course, I can't think of any of them now, but of um, investigators and just people trying them out and getting interesting things from them. So, um, all right. So I think that's where I'll leave that. You can all check out the article and read it in detail for detail for yourselves. And uh, with that, I think I'll move on to the next one here. Um, and this one, this one is from. Uh, let me see here. Devin's, uh, I'm sorry, DevonLive.com. And this one says, Mysterious blue UFO spotted above Devon Coast. Um, and I believe this is from the UK. This, is, this says that, um, according to a witness named Nicola, there's a blue unidentified thing. Uh, which, when enlarged, looks like a spacecraft. I find it interesting, uh, neat that it's um, it's blue, but it's it's appears to be a craft. Because when I first when I saw blue, I was wondering if it, if it was going to turn out to be just a light, like what I saw. Um, but so uh, apparently, this witness says that she may have caught a photo of a UFO flying over the North Devon coast. Um, she says that she has put the, the um, took the photos on her mobile phone on February 23rd, so this is a little ways back, and doesn't know what they can what what she caught on them. She says that she took them in quick succession. Uh, apparently, in one there's a blue unidentified thing, as it said in the beginning, which, when enlarged, looks uh, looks to me a bit like a spacecraft. In alignment with the stars and the moon. In the second, it says the blue blue thing has moved out of alignment, and then in the third, it is gone completely. So it has some pictures here in the um, the beginning of the article, and um, so it says that before taking the images, uh, Nicola had just left a friend's house uh, when it was getting dark. And um, she and the friend both comment on, uh, commented on the moon and stars, which looked really bright. And um, so, let's see here. So, yeah, that's... Um, so, Nicola decided to try to take some pictures of the night sky because she had just gotten this new phone with a new camera in it, obviously. And, uh, and then that's how she eventually caught those whatever this was that she she caught in photo so neat sighting there and uh always interested in those sightings of odd things in the sky there wherever wherever they show up uh this next one i think i have time for one more uh it's not a super long one but uh it is a video of um possible video or image of uh, bigfoot and um this one is from, let's see here, uh, WRRV.com. 
And the title of this one says, Curious Bigfoot Video Emerges from the Upper Cumberland of Tennessee. So, uh, it talks about um, just the, the interest in Bigfoot and uh, this video, which, of course, um, it was shared on Twitter, but there's apparently there's no sound. And, um, and of course, as it, me it mentions in this article, as with everything, when it comes to videos, it's hard to know if it's fake or, or if it's real. But if it's real, then that's... I always like to include the possibility of these things somehow being real. You never know. So, um, just a quick one there. And uh, I think I'll leave it to you all to check out that video. So, and uh, let me see here. So, yeah, I have two more here, but I think I'll save those for next time. Um, just again, to a, remind, a couple of reminders, uh, tomorrow there will not be a live stream, but um, there will be a show that comes out um, by Thursday morning. So, looking forward to that. That's going to be the next roundtable, which is going to be a lot of fun. And um, so, looking forward to that. Let's see here. Oh, I missed miss something in chat. Um, PDG says the blue lights look kind of like the Star Trek ship. Interesting. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's going to be, next show will be a roundtable show that will come out on Thursday morning at some point. Um, look, really looking forward to that. That will be featuring, uh, Michael Strange from Trouble Minds Radio and, uh, Jennifer Hawkins. You all know from calling in to Mike's show and being on my show and, uh, having your own YouTube channel. So, uh, really excited to do that show and you will find out what it's about. Um, at least when you hear it in more detail. Uh, I will just say the um, first article tonight made me laugh a little bit because of a, a little synchronicity. That article mentioned uh, fairies other, and other myth mythical beings. So, um, I'll just leave that as a hint as to what we're going to talk about in, in that, that roundtable show. Um, Again, I'm go I will be, from now on, sharing the links to all my books, basically my book page on Amazon, and um, other ways you all can contribute to the show if you, if you would like to, um, just, uh, just um, in case you really do enjoy the content and you want to help out in addition to sharing the show, um, any support would be greatly appreciated, and I think that'll do it for today. Thank you all for listening, and um, I will talk to you all uh, through um, time travel a little bit on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal, uh, when we talk about uh, the Fae and uh, the Paranormal. So, um, thank you all for listening, and I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.